Just like a puzzle, the cello is made of multiple parts, but let's break it down. There are four main steps that lead to a completed cello. First, you form a mold, glue the pieces together in sections, apply a nice varnish, then put all the sections together. When creating the mold, it is used to guide the shape and size of a single cello. Six blocks are cut to form the outline, then six ribs are added to bend the shape of the wood with the use of light heat so it doesn't crack. Once it is positioned, the mold is then glued and clamped so that the glue can set evenly while it dries. Usually, the wood that is commonly used is spruce for the front and maple for the back. Starting from the back, they cut a piece of bark radially and then in half. However, it is very important that both sides were cut in half are identical. That way, the cello would be able to create the proper sound waves while it's being played. Then, they do the same for the front, except they add two F-holes on each side. These holes help the sound waves come out more clearly. As the cello is set to dry, the neck is formed. A carver takes a large maple block and carves the neck, peg box, and scroll roughly by hand. The carver usually used scarabies and a chisel as their main tools, but there are many tools that can be used. Afterwards, all three parts are glued in place with the nut to keep all pieces together. After all are glued, the fingerboard is then added to the neck carefully so that it matches the size of the cello. The cello is then varnished, however before it is varnished, the fingerboard is taken off as it's meant only for the body of the cello. The cello is then kept outside in the sun for about a week so that the color of the wood darkens to the preference of the person who buys it. Then the varnish is put onto the cello. It is a toxic substance so workers must wear a mask while varnishing the cello. It is left alone for multiple days. After the time is up, the worker removes the excess varnish that did not dry by using special oils. Lastly, the final coat of varnish is added, along with the fingerboard. Then is to actually build the cello. A saddle is attached to relieve the stress off of the strings. This technique is used so that if the cello needs to be repaired, it will be easier to remove. Grooves in the nut are made to keep all four strings in place. There are four strings, starting from left to right, C is the lowest, G, D, and A being the highest. Pegs are then added. This is where the top of the strings are added by a little hole in the pegs. It is also a way to tune the cello when it is badly out of tune. Finally, the bridge is created to match the size of the cello. The size goes from 1 quarter to 4 fourths based off of a person's age and height. After the bridge is positioned, the tailpiece, end pin, and strings are attached into place. The end pin is actually what makes the cello stick to the surface so it does not slide. It is also retractable so the person can choose how long or short they want the cello to be while practicing or performing. The strings are then added to the tail of the cello in little screws to help tune the cello when it is slightly out of tune. Lastly, all the strings are checked so that the adjustments to the strings and bridge are exactly where they need to be. Altogether, the cello consists of 70 pieces and takes 200 to 300 hours just to finish a single cello. Every country builds theirs differently, but overall, this is how a cello is made.